Welcome back, man. We're going to do it uh, today of episode uh, 39 of Brick Shots with Billy. We're going to do it without our uh, Craig Mack flavor in your ear intro. Um, uh, so I got something special for the intro. It's coming. We just got to announce our big news. Oh, yeah, dude. So we do have some big news. Uh, like I said, this is episode 39, man. We're going to make some uh, some interesting changes, some fun times, bring some uh, some stuff to the show that uh, I don't think anyone else is ready for, man. Uh, you want to give the people the good news, Tony? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Good to see you, my brother. Good to see you. See you. Uh, all right, man. So, you know, we told y'all, stay with us, stick around. We're going to continue to grow, right? So when me and Billy were sitting at the smoke pit, drunk, I, I don't smoke, but we was drunk because it was just a place to be out in Guam talking about this. We weren't alone. That's true. We we um, and Pat McAfee is a big fan of our show. So That's true. Um, we had talked to him about it and he kind of went and did it because we well, made way more money than we did. You know, yeah. either way, we're figuring it out. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to do, man. We're going to add to the team. Still going to mm-hmm. be brick shots with Billy Antonio, but it's going to be even greater, man. We're going to bring in some people that get in. I know I've had a lot of fans, hey, talk about soccer, talk about baseball, talk about hockey. Well, now we finna bring in the Barry Melroses and all of that to get it done. Um, So we were supposed to be a four-man tonight, but one of our men had something going on. So we're a three-man crew. So we're going to introduce our friend. I call him Al Boylan, but our man, uh, Big Matt Brangard, coming to the show. Woo! Yeah! Welcome! Yes, sir! What's going on, fellas? Hey, dude. And with that introduction... <laughs> Now we can start the new and improved show off the right way. Hell yeah. Yeah. What's up, Matt? You doing okay? What's up, Matt? Hey, I'm out here living. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, man. Welcome to the show, man. Uh, you've seen a couple episodes. You kind of know how we get down here. We just have our regular ass average joe podcast right here this is for the every man right here you can dodge a wrench you can dodge a ball exactly <laughs> and that's why we added him he gets it <laughs> uh but all right man let's get it let's get into the heat of the show man uh we'll start off with uh so this is a new way we're gonna do it or not where we're gonna do it but this is just how this episode's gonna run out uh we'll start off with billy's best man and number one i got the kansas city chiefs I don't know if y'all can tell me a better team than the Chiefs right now. Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey is just that's the most unstoppable duo in the league, bro. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Uncle Shannon said last night that Travis Kelsey might probably gonna be the best tight end to ever do it, and yeah, I feel like he could do it for at least three more years. I don't think he was wrong, bro. Like at this level, for sure. Yeah, bro. like yeah. It, it's crazy out there, bro. Like, and everybody thought the fall off, including me, the fall off with losing, um, with losing Cheetah. I was like, they're not gonna be able to just do all that. They never really had a great running game, and as we can see, they still don't. Um, Edwards okay. Hilaire, he's in my fantasy. He he went from doing his thing to not even getting carries anymore. <laughs> so I'm just like, all right, uh, but they still been making it work and. It's been working, bro. Like, uh, how how you feel about it, Matt? I don't know. I think they do have a run game now with uh, dude from Rutgers. There, he looks. He does look better. That's probably why my fantasy sucks now. (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, him one on one, it doesn't. It seems like he has. He wins that fifty fifty every time. No, definitely. I think Andy Reid also like him just drawing up those plays. It's hard to not you know, be a successful running back out there. Um, yeah. Because he, 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 he definitely – Andy Reid probably still the greatest offensive mind in the game, I think, uh, or at least top five right now. Uh, I think he's still – no, I'm with you on the greatest mind because I think some of the newer offensive, quote-unquote, offensive minds try to do too much cutesy, cutesy shit. And yeah. I think Andy's still just like, no, we're just going to play football and that's how we're going to win. I don't know. I think he gets away with the cutesy shit just because cause it works every time. The other times for other people, it doesn't work. Like all that stuff in the like red zone. I mean, some teams would call that cutesy, but it works a hundred percent of the time for them. 
No, okay, I'm with that. But I I, I got a rebuttal to that, Matt. Uh, when I get to when I get to the certain team, I'm going to get to. But at number two, I still have the Fly Eagles fly Philadelphia Eagles at number two. Am I crazy because they just lost to the Commanders and they barely beat a Colts team with a coach with zero experience? Am I am I tripping? Nope. Um, I still think I might still think they still the best team in the league. Actually, okay. Uh, most complete team at at every facet. Uh, wide receiver, wide receiver combo, great. Oh, yeah. Running game with quarterback and running back, great. Uh, offensive line, twelve times better than it was last year. Yeah. Um, now where they lack is is play calling. I think um, they having Jalen Hurts. They only ran the ball like four times in the first half uh, yesterday. That's yeah. That's not that's not what you do uh, if you're them with Miles Sanders looking like he looks with Jalen Hurts being able to run a little Lamar ish plays. You know, uh, they he has to get coach got to get it together um, with that. But um, their defense has slipped a little bit. But I think you know it's it's what what we at. Uh, 11 mm-hmm. games of the season, yeah. 10 games of the season. So it's like, all right, bro, people get tired, you know. Um, but I still think they, if not one, they are the number two team in the league. Uh, what'd you see? Um, uh, what'd you see, Matt? I think you're pretty spot on there with how the way they play, if they're clicking on all cylinders, they're definitely the best team in the NFL. But the way the Chiefs are playing right now, it's hard to say they're not number one in the NFL. Exactly. And yeah. and uh, going back to the Chiefs real quick, only thing that scares me is still that defense. I feel like, you know. <sighs> but I think if you have Patrick Mahomes, dude, you're not worried that your defense is going to give up a certain amount of points. They're yeah, they were, they they were down worried. plus points in each game, and they still came back and won every single one of those games. Yeah, but they weren't worried with the defense with Pat Mahomes when he was throwing it uh, – Two years ago in the Super Bowl, and yeah, you know that, well, that was the offensive line problem, though. You know, I mean, still, I just, yeah. I just, uh, I don't know, um, because because they'll eventually have to play the be- the best team for one a uh, one game, and everybody gets better in the playoffs because it's winner go home. So I just feel like you know, uh, the defense still scare me. Source is still gonna get burnt. Uh, yeah, and like let's fast forward and say they do play the Eagles in the uh, the Super Bowl, bro. Sourcing getting torched either side of the ball. Oh yeah, like, either side of the field. I mean, so I don't know. I, I kind of want to see how Andy Reid could uh, scheme with that on the defensive side when they do play these wide receivers that can get past sourcing and what they'll do for that. But as of right now, can't nobody stop them from scoring, so it don't matter. Big shout out to Jeff Saturday for handling the Eagles pretty well. And then they needed that Jalen Hurts last second touchdown to get that game over. Yeah. So Matt, you're a big, you're a big Jeff Saturday guy. You like this move. I do. I, I believe if he would have won yesterday, his name going forward would be just Jeff Sunday. No more Saturday. No, I respect it. You think, you think Jeff Saturday can hang on to this job and be the coach next year too? Or do you think it is an interim job? And they're just, he's going to let Jim like figure something out and he's just going to be the guy while he's figuring it out. I think if he goes 500 the rest of the year, at least, you know, I believe if he wants to stay next year, the job is his to take. But if he wants to go back to ESPN, then obviously he's going to start hiring some coaches then. See, that's something else I've never understood. Like, dude, if you have, like, look at Mark Jackson, like, if you can just sit at ESPN and just talk or at TNT and just talk, like, why would you not want that lifestyle as opposed to the, film every week every you're preparing you're preparing you're getting a roster ready you're getting the players ready you're trying to figure out depth charts you know what i mean maybe i'm tripping but i'd rather just at espn i don't think he's got that competitive itch at espn he might enjoy his job but you know being in the nfl 14 years he was competitive towards something and i think this is his way back into that no that's fair i'll be honest and then we can get back to billy's best uh we won't have to talk about this next year because jeff shatter won't be the coach after this year Love them. Uh, when I played offensive line, when I played center, he was one of my favorite people to like mimic because he just commanded his offensive line. But he ain't a head coach. Uh, I just, I still don't believe you jump from reporter to 
all right, just knowing all the facets of the game. No, and and I just feel like, hey, all right, you know, it's it's too much. Like Billy said, you gotta do all this breaking down, it, and then it's more that comes with it. Like outside of the season, you don't stop. You still gotta go to, mm-hmm. you gotta go scout. You gotta go do this. You gotta go do that. I don't know if I would give up my probably like three, four million dollar a year ESPN talking job to come get three more million to do 40,000 more things. I don't know. I, they won't go 500 with him. Uh, so, yeah, we won't have to worry about it. All right. That's on tape now, Tony. So be ready. All right. So my number three team, uh, and I feel like maybe this is where we're going to start our disagreements, but the Miami Dolphins look really, really good. They beat the Bills, who everyone had as the Super Bowl favorites. Mike McDaniel was making Tua look like fucking Joe Montana from back in the day. Having adding Tyreek Hill. So uh, when we were talking about the Chiefs earlier, look, we're talking the Chiefs and each fucking squad that we're going to. But I wasn't, a, I didn't think that losing Tyreek Hill was going to stop the Kansas City Chiefs, but he's making Miami look like some real, real contenders. And I think Tyreek should be talked about as an MVP candidate. No and no. Uh, who is one lick away from being uh, being autistic or something like it's gonna be? He's not even gonna be able to talk, bro. Like it's 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 not good, bro. Like I don't I don't think I don't think that they had an offensive line when they play a good defense, bro. Like he gonna fucking it's, it's gonna reoccur, bro. Like, I feel like he's going to catch that one lick and it's just going to joke all that shit that they said he had. And like you said, Billy, you called it. You said he was going to risk it all. But, eh, once two is gone, they got Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, Who's still, literally the bridge quarterback of every team ever, he, yes. He, he's still a good quarterback, but uh, nah. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe in them at all. What about you? What says you, Matt? I think they'll win their division, but I don't know how far they'll go in the playoffs. I'm still undecided on them. You don't think that them winning the division over the Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots is like a big thing, and especially with the Jets also playing good? It's not like anybody in that in that division is garbage. No, but I, I don't think that style of offense they play is going to translate well to the playoffs where everyone knows what they're going to be doing. They're going to be throwing it deep. They're going to be hitting Waddle a million times a game, be getting hit hitting Hill a million times a game. They're just going to – in the playoffs, it's going to be a different, like, scenario for them. So I'm not, no, I'm not too sold on it. Yeah, at least. Can you be sold on it? I could be. But okay. right now, I'm, I'm leaning towards not. Okay, because Tonio is just not having it I, either. I just – I don't – I don't – I don't uh, – I don't believe in them. <laughs> I don't – I don't, bro. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on to number four. And uh, again, so I knew that number three would probably like ruffle some feathers or, or get us to start disagreeing. Um, but I do want to say on the Dolphins, does it kind of look like maybe the owner was right for fry- firing uh, Brian Flores? Or no? Was that still the wrong move? Still the wrong move. Matt? Still- uh, I mean, if they get to the playoffs and they win a playoff game, it's going to be hard to say it was the wrong move. But I feel like the way they went about it will always be wrong. Bingo. Okay. I think I can I can exact that sentiment. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So, number four, man, I got the Tennessee Titans at number four. Uh, I think Derrick Henry is just obviously Derrick Henry. And I think Ryan Tannehill, when he plays like he just played – um, this team might be unstoppable. Now, when they played in the playoffs, he had those three picks that were god-awful, and they still barely lost. So I think there is something to be said about that. But the way the Titans are playing right now, I can see them in the AFC Championship game against the Chiefs. Uh, so Mr. 1K is back. Uh, we knew that was going to happen. Um, yeah. But now he's throwing he, – he's back throwing uh, – Tebow touchdowns to like jump pass touchdowns. He the best running back in the league, but it, it ain't it ain't that ain't hard to argue. Um, but we still gotta see him stay healthy. Like, you yep. know, he's still running the ball 20, 30 times a game. And uh, it's like this is not Alabama anymore. This is the NFL. Like you cannot yeah. be getting 30 carries a game. 
Robert Woods and uh, Robert Woods still doesn't have a great connection with Tannehill to me. Um, Tannehill is still not great. They benched Malik because he, he just did not look good. No, nah, no, okay. no, no, no. He just, he didn't look good either. Uh, and their offensive coordinator just got uh, arrested for a DUI. The Friday so, after there's, there's a lot going on there, but like and respect and like like I said, man, we had this high we had this same high hopes for them last year. Like I yeah. remember calling them the best team in the league at one point last year. And you just kept so, looking silly and silly. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, so I gotta see Derrick Henry healthy, they always a plus. Uh but they don't have they AJ Brown's gone. Yeah, Traylon Burt gone, hurt. No, no, he played last night. Or- Did he? Yeah, he, he had, he had catches for like 111 yards. Oh, never mind. I yeah. take back everything I said. They'll beat the Bills. <laughs> so they'll beat the Bills, uh, and they'll give Chiefs the run, a run for their money. Okay, that, that's that's what I was scared of. Like, uh, no receiver, uh, Tannehill shit in the bed, Derrick Henry getting overworked in the regular season. Yeah. That's still probably possible and the Tannehill shit, but uh I don't know. They they the fourth best right now. I respect that. All right, so let me go to number five. And here's where we're all gonna disagree. And this is the whole point of my list is to get us where I think number five, um, the Dallas Cowboys is who I have at number five. So I think the Vikings are legit. I think they played a bad game, and I think Every team's allowed a bad game, and I think that was the one that the Vikings are going to have. Now, Matt, I know that you do not think the Vikings are any good. Explain to the people why you think so. They have a negative two-point differential throughout all their games. But they've only lost two of them. Exactly. They, how do they lose only two games and have negative two points in the season? So that so that's what I that's what I'm that's what, where I like the Vikings at is they win the hard games. If it was an Andy Reid or a Sean McVay winning these close tight knit games, we would talk about how great their minds are and how good that they're at of calling games and getting the team ready and blah 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 grinding out wins yaze yaze. But because it's the Vikings and we're not and it's Kirk Cousins, it's all yeah. of a sudden now it's like oh they're frauds oh they're this blah 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 blah. You get Mr. 1 to 4 p.m. out of his time zone, he's going to lose. <laughs> no, he did. It was it was the late afternoon game, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. Uh, he lost. Yeah. Ah, man, that's And funny. what time are playoff games normally? Not all of them are at 1, a, or 1 p.m. I don't They're think any playoff later in the day. One. <laughs> he might have a point, uh, but I'm not going to let you get away with uh, – the Cowboys being the field best team in the league. The Cowboys look good, man. Even no, they don't. Team no, they don't. No, they team. don't. Baby. No, they don't. Hey, before we keep going though, the word I was looking for was aneurysm, not autism. Uh, no disrespect to anybody with autism or anybody that has children with autism. The word was aneurysm. Tool will get uh, aneurysm, not autism. Uh, but. Uh, I definitely don't think the Cowboys are good. They still got the biggest cancer. And that's having Jerry Jones still be the GM, owner, coach. Uh, I love Jerry Jones. I don't care what Jerry Jones is the biggest cancer that the Cowboys have. Like, if Jerry Jones would just sit up there and watch the game, no, make no decisions. Cowboys probably been them uh, one another Super Bowl. But I'll never believe in them again until they show – like, oh, this is the most dominant team in the league. It's been since 1995, Billy. We'll never have them in our top five again. I promise y'all that. If Billy puts it in his notes, I will erase that shit because I got access. Like, <laughs> bro, let's not let's not do this. We do this every year with the Cowboys. Oh, they look good. Oh, they look great. They got Mike McCarthy now. Mike I'm not McCarthy, saying, I'm not Mike saying McCarthy was a fucking man you. in Green Bay with a better quarterback. You're acting like I'm like they're the best team I've ever seen. Really? Them being the fifth best team in week, what is it? Week twelve, week thirteen? We've done it's this twice, 12. and it's week eleven. Week eleven? Fuck no. I can have them as the fifth best team, man. You're no, like, no, no. So you, remember, you remember last year when Iowa was ranked number two? 
I don't care about that, Billy. I don't. It's the Cowboys. You're just a hater. I trust, so I'll hard trust hard hater. any other sports franchise than the Cowboys. The Saskatchewan uh, fucking Rough Riders. Riders. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, the team that the White Howard plays for in Taiwan. Oh, God. I trust them to get a win. Oh, well, oh, we'll, get, we'll get to the White Howard over, over the Cowboys, but I and it's it's not because I hate the Cowboys. I just hate the fans. Like you know how many fans on Twitter is like, yeah, you know we going this year, right? <laughs> no, no. I, think I've met, I think I've met, and then being from Dallas, also, I think I've met four Cowboys fans that are like relatively okay to deal with if you talk about the Cowboys in the NFL. I know one. I know one. You talking about Ruru? That's it? Who? LaRue? Excuse me. I didn't know he was a Cowboys fan. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. He's from Austin. Cowgirls. It <laughs> correlates. Uh, nah, I know one. And she, she like, every time I tell her they suck, she like, yeah, we, we kind of bad. Respect to her. <laughs> yeah, hey, definitely. So- we're going to get to our last NFL topic. And I texted, I put this in a group chat the other day. So Devin Hester, obviously, so I, I want to make this clear that I, I understand that he should probably be in the Hall of Fame. I'm not saying he should not be in the Hall of Fame. I do, however, have an issue with first ballot when he didn't do anything in any other facet of the game except for special teams. So Cordell Patterson just broke the record of most kick returns for a touchdown. And does that mean he should be first ballot Hall of Fame or is it just Devin Hester because of how many more no. punt returns he had? You saying that Devin Hester didn't do anything else in the other facets of the game is like not putting Peyton Manning in the Hall of Fame because he didn't rush for 5,000 yards. No. That's, that's, exact, that's yes. exactly what it is, Billy. Billy, did, did the facet of the game that he impacted score points? Yes or no? Don't, yes. don't break it down, yes or no. That's all I need to know. Was he not the best at doing that? Yes or no? Yes. Even hey, when he really? would line up for wide receiver, was Rex Grossman not his quarterback? And Jay Cutler. But first, it was Rex Grossman. No, I got you. Yeah. All right. So, Billy, let's let's not do that to Devin Hester. Devin Hester definitely should be a first round, a first ballot Hall of Fame, bro. For doing for doing what he did. Uh, they changed the rules because of Devin Hester, bro. Like, you know how big that is, Billy. Bro, they didn't change the rules for Devin Hester. Billy, yes, Billy yes, do you know? In, do you know in 2006 the team that went to the Super Bowl? He was a second leading scorer on their offense without scoring an offensive touchdown. Yes, no, I I do know those numbers absolutely. That's yes, I'm with you. Nuts. So why but, is that not why why is that not impressive to you? No, no, no. I, see, see, that's the misconception, man. I'm not saying it was inimpressive. I'm not saying that he did amazing things for the NFL. I'm not saying that he's one of the best players we've ever seen. That doesn't correlate to first. I think m- maybe, maybe I'm just on a. I think first ballot means like it, it's it's it should be hard to do. It's not this just like oh yeah easy day. Like so so To is not a first ballot Hall of Famer. That's a fucking problem. That's because they hate their haters because they didn't like what he did off the field. No, and I'm with you, but I want me, I want some consistency. So if T.O. is not first ballot, if Ocho Cinco is not first ballot, Devin Hester is not. I'm sorry. He's just not. How many Hall of Fame voters? Like 150? Like, you're not going to get consistency out of those idiots. So Deion Sanders has, uh, I think it's 12 less touchdowns returned. But he's also the best corner we've ever seen in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I've seen yes. I've seen someone who can return, but also play well on the other side of the field. Yeah, but that ain't what he was there for, Billy. Like that's he came in as a returner, but like that's what he did. No, so. he was a four star receiver out of Florida. I don't want to hear that shit. No, he, looked terrible. he came into the league as a cornerback, and then they but transitioned looked, him to a wide yeah. receiver. Yeah, he looked, yeah. He, he he didn't look good at that. If y'all go back and watch the, cause he wait, he played at Miami, right? Miami, yeah. yeah, yeah. He didn't look good in Miami. Uh, he just fast as fuck. <laughs> like, national championship team, dude. Oh, so because he was on the national championship team, he was detrimental to them winning the uh, Natty. I mean, if that's what we're all saying right now, he helped, right? He the as a kick returner, punt returner, he's helping. 
That's what y'all just said. But now, no, 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 no. You, you're talking about his cornerback position. I'm talking about him being a returner. Yeah, I'm saying it's now next year. Absolutely, he should be in the Hall of Fame next year. But first, that that's fucking crazy to me. How I many think kickers, if you can, how many kickers are first ballot Hall of Famers? You want the answer? Is, that's zero. a problem. That's a problem. That's 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 not good though, Billy. Like you making our art. It should be more. It's positions should be uh, magnified. Like they should they should be uh, get rewarded for what they do. Adam Vinatieri should be a, a first round first ballot. Um, I think the first bat the first kicker that we'll see to be one is gonna be your boy. It's gonna be Justin Tucker. He definitely gonna be a. If not, then it's a the we should get rid of the Hall of Fame. Period. But going back to the positions, for Brody to lead his team second in scoring, Billy, second in scoring, and you don't want him to be a first ballot. Yeah, because he's just a part turner. I'm sorry. That's the biggest hate. I, that's I right. told, once I Justin told, Tucker comes up for the Hall of Fame, we'll respark this. <laughs> yeah. He's just a kicker. Yeah, he didn't do anything else. He didn't win them games. Whoa! See, that's it. How many games did, did Devin Hester win? I'll tell you something. Uh, Deshaun Jackson has more wins with a punt return than Devin Hester does. That's just because you're remembering the walk off on top of your head. Yeah, I do think about that often because yeah. it was so awesome. Yeah. I actually got to see that too, so it was like one of those things. I was oh, I was watching it six inches from my TV in the living room. How many how many Super Bowl kickoffs have has uh, he took to the house though, Billy? Oh, so then Jacoby Ford should be a fucking Hall of Famer too because he took one back in the the second half of his Super Bowl. So oh, he's yeah, Hall of Famer nah, too, right? Yeah, he he got tripped by Mike Tomlin, didn't he? He shouldn't be. That was yeah. Thanksgiving Day. And he should have had that touchdown. But in the Super Bowl, he actually had the touchdown. Yeah, but it wasn't the opening kickoff. So there's that. There's that. Man, Not with way. Jim Nance or whoever was announcing it, everything, all the hype. And then next thing you know, he's just bolting down the field. I was, and Hester. I, I wasn't – like, I hadn't seen that much excitement from a bigger game since uh, – what's the name? Took it back in – the uh national championship and then he's he tore his acl or uh mcl fucking the fast dude fast he from virginia percy harvin when he took it back oh there we go that was that was a hell of a call too though yeah it was that was crazy but either way uh he should be a first battle of the hall of famer and this person that's still playing quarterback right now his hall of fame draft stock is going down Somebody, I, I don't know who typed it, but somebody said that the Broncos would be uh eight and two with Drew Locks. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, and I'm a, I'm in agreement. Drew Locks was saying, Drew Locks was singing a rap song on the bench, uh, when they showed him and he was jigging to it. He looked way better than Les Ride Wilson to me. So, I, Billy, the Billy and Matt, the more weeks that go by. The more stories coming out about Russ, and it's starting to seem like Russ is just sorry on the field and in the locker room. When somebody of Marshawn Lynch's caliber said he tried to reach out to you, but he had to go through his management to get to you, nah, bro, you a piece of shit. I don't, I don't care. I don't care about the you still you still a real one because you got Sierra, but. There it is. That's all I needed someone to say. Okay. But other than that, you're a piece of shit, bro. Like Marshawn Lynch got your number and he texts you and you're not answering on the first that first half a ring. You're a piece of shit, bro. Like, That's probably why Marshawn got that DUI. He tried calling Russ. Yeah. Come pick him up. Come pick him up. Can't ride. See? Damn. <laughs> I didn't even think about that until just now. Ain't that about a bitch? No. I'd be so mad. Yeah. What I, is, I like Marshawn. how that was Marshawn. That just got slipped under the rug, too. Marshawn getting a DUI. Now he's in more commercials than he ever was in. Yeah, bro, because <laughs> the police fuck with Marshawn. Like, everybody fuck with Marshawn except for Russ. That Russ. is crazy to me, bro. Like, then, all right, so, hey, let me raise you, because I did see in the group chat, my first thought, though, my first thought, would Drew Locke be averaging 20 points with Nathaniel Hackett calling the place? See, what I didn't look up is what Russ averaged last year points per game, but – Drew Locke averaged 20 points per game in Denver with a, 
a team not as good as it is, is now. So yeah, that, dude, Pastor Tan the second is fucking real as fuck. Well, unless he's going up against Devontae. All right, that so I don't think that one. I think that was the safety's fault because if you saw that cover too, it really wasn't like. I don't know why the safety shadowed to the other side of the field. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like I Justin, don't know, Simmons, but... so Justin Simmons had like carried over to I think it's Holland side, and it's like Devonte Adams is right there. Like, what the fuck are you doing right there? I mean, but the way got, you got Pat Sertan, you kind of thinking like, all right, man, you know, you got a little yeah, <laughs> yeah. You Pat Sertan. When... The way you just hyped them up, like that's yeah. fair. No, you, yeah. the way yeah. PS two went, it didn't look like like who are you gonna cover? <laughs> And then Devontae just went out and was just 60 yards open. No, no I, I wasn't mad because I have Derek Carr in my fantasy, so I wasn't that upset. <laughs> I was more excited about the touchdown. I got Devontae on my team, so. There we go, yeah. But what what are, what are the Broncos going to – can they bench Russ, bro? <laughs> like, no, you dude, that contract, you can't bench that contract. There's no fucking way. Well, and after this year, nobody, ev- nobody is ever going to pick Russ up again. This is his last ride. <laughs> like – <laughs> hey, this is it. He's gonna, That's right. he's gonna get the he's camp treatment. Talking. Yeah, and then, bro, with it's it's so crazy. Like to see Pete taking a shot at him too. It's like, well, now I got a quarterback, and it's Geno that no, can wear a ring. Man, see, that's the thing too. Pete is a player's coach, dude. Like he would not throw any of his other players under the bus, like regardless of what they said about him or any of that shit. And he's just out here like, fuck that dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. Bro, Russ a piece of shit. It makes sense now. Like the whole this dude the cornball shit kind of making sense to me now. Like maybe Russ is a piece of shit, bro. Cause like I just can't get over the who the fuck wouldn't answer the phone for Marshawn Lynch, bro. Like yeah, just to see what's up. Like yeah, like oh, dude, are you gonna go hang out with Bear Giles? Like I want to go. Like there's no like, like, yeah, like you know. Marshawn Lynch probably top five most interesting dudes in in the America right now, bro. Like oh yeah. Because, like, he's just doing a lot of shit that you wouldn't even think. Dude's feeding fucking gators, bro. <laughs> like, hey, he ain't going to bite me, is he? Let me touch him a little bit. Like, dude's just out here living life, bro. Like, yeah, He's got bro. the best post-NFL retirement I've ever seen. Yeah, bro. Like, he just having fun. Y'all know what it's going to be when I came up here. Y'all should have muted that shit when I – like, bro, <laughs> he him. He himself. And yeah. he having fun with it. I don't get it, bro. Uh Either way, man, that's that's it for the NFL. Also, because we already talked about a real coach would have beat the Eagles. We ain't got to go back through that, Matt. Uh, and that's a shot at your boy, Jeff. Not Sunday. Uh, hey. Billy, did you want to go through your worst team or? No, nah, um, no, nah, we can move on to the NBA. All right, bet, man. So I'm going to follow suit and pull a Billy. Uh, and I'm going to do Tonio's top tier. My favorite Billy, segment of the week. Billy has a problem with it, and I don't and, get it down. Yeah, a huge problem, but I'm with it. <laughs> you said it's a huge problem? I have a huge, yes. All right, well, here we go. <laughs> Starting off with the number one team in the NBA to me, and that is, if I can get to my notes. I don't see it in my notes. Here we go. The Boston Celtics. Billy called it. Uh, he ben called it. Uh, I like I said on this show, me and Billy, we just average men. When he calls some shit and I'm wrong, if we ain't bet on it, I'm admitting it. Now, if we bet it, I ain't saying shit. Uh, because I'm true, a real, that. yeah, I'm a real one too. Still, I'm still a real <laughs> one, you know. But the Boston Celtics, I I said they was gonna fumble, crumble without MA. Uh, but nah, <laughs> like Jalen Brown, Jalen Brown is becoming his own separate star on that team. I love to see it. And Jason Tatum, even when he having an off night, he's still Jason Tatum. And they just getting it together, bro. Like, their role players understand their roles and they go out and do what they need to do. Marcus Smart is... Marcus Smart is what everybody thinks Pat Bev is. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, he really, he really is an irritant that can really lock down without the foul. He... Well, uh, and- and he he's a he's a better leader, I think, than Pat Bev. I think Pat Bev might be um smarter, like on the floor per se, but I think yeah. 
Marcus Smart has this, like, I'm going to lead these dudes. Like, I know I'm not the best player on the team, but they're going to fucking listen to what the fuck I have to say and respect it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I, I, I like it. Now, I, I can't slack Pat too bad because he's a Laker now and because there is moments where he's coaching on the on the floor. He telling him, like, especially on the defensive side of the ball when people mess up, he coaching. But Marcus Smart is actually, you know, Pat Bev is still an irritant, but – Marcus Smart is an irritant that can get turnovers without filing. Yeah. He makes the hustle. He does the hustle plays. Like, that fast break last week was probably some of the most beautiful basketball I've seen in a minute. Uh, the out-of-bounds saves directly to Jason Tatum, to uh, Grant Williams for the, the oops, pretty mm-hmm. ball. Um, the Celtics look good. Matt, Billy, y'all got any any disagreement with that? Absolutely not. I've been telling you since since day one that the Celtics are going to be just fine. All right, my number two, Milwaukee Bucks, bro. Uh, bro, they still playing good ball. No Chris Middleton. Like, uh, bro, it's, that's really scary. If nobody's talking about it either, it's like, Excuse me. all right, these dudes can win a game, and they can win a game uh, with Brooke Lopez scoring like 17 or something like that. But you're not adding the 26 that Middleton brings to the table. They're playing really good defense as well. Um, so, so I'm with I'm with that 100, percent Tonio. But I will say, back in the day too, when uh, not to bring this conversation into uh, LeBron territory, but when LeBron would be out and the team would lose, I think he got a lot more flack. Or when Kyrie and Kevin Love were out and LeBron was still winning all these games without them. He wasn't getting near the praise that Giannis is getting now. And that's the only – I think that's the only issue necessarily that I have with it. But Giannis is obviously in a league of his own, and he's probably the best player in the league. I uh, I just uh, – I, I, I hate to speak on LeBron because we fan, but the real one – the real LeBron fans who, you know, because we're not biased. We're not a biased show. We're we going to do what it is. Uh, oh, we know. We know. Um so I'm with you, but we know. And for my number three, I got a surprise for Billy. He thought I was going to leave him out. Uh, it's the Utah Jazz, man. Them boys. Them okay, boys. that just wasn't in the notes. What happened? Hey, man, I got to keep you guessing, man. I was ready to argue that for the whole Matt, time. Uh, Matt, was wasn't, Matt wasn't in the notes. The no. we thought you thought we were gonna do the intro. See, I gotta keep us guessing, man. I gotta keep it fresh. Now nah, the Utah Jazz. Um, you can't keep the guys on the show in the in, like. <laughs> yeah. You won't be. You won't be as excited as you was just now, bro. Like, I knew oh, that's a good point. I was yeah, pretty excited. Yeah, because okay. you was like ready to argue and all of that. No, nah, but Utah Jazz not to have a star. Twelve and six. I think they're top of the West. That is impressive. Um. We, we're going to talk more about the Utah Jazz in a second here, but that's impressive. Utah probably could edge out the Bucks for number two if we're being real. Um, Maybe, but without Middleton, though, you're, you're absolutely yeah, nailed ahead. If we're being real, um, because the Jazz is doing all they can do with all they got. Uh, Mike Conley, I think he was hurt, but Mike Conley only averaging like maybe six points. Um, Still yeah. a coach on the floor that you can't yeah. get. Uh, what am I trying to say? You can't take that away. Like being a coach on the floor, like that's hard. It is. Uh, it's real hard. Having IQ is hard because everybody, anybody can go get a bucket, but it's playing smart basketball. You know, like knowing where you can get the bucket, how you can get into the bonus, who has the bad matchup, what defense they're in. That's hard. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Uh, my number four team. Is the Phoenix Suns? Uh, the 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 Suns, they doing what we thought they was gonna do. They're gonna be good as long as Chris Paul is there. I don't. Um, I still don't think DeAndre or is his name his name not DeAndre. What's Aiton's first name? Yeah, DeAndre. DeAndre. Oh, DeAndre. Yeah, I don't think DeAndre is particularly happy there. Still, I still don't think. I mean, he happy with the money, but I I still don't think he's happy there. A lot of uh, money. It's hard. Huh? I was just gonna say, dude, it's hard. Like, I don't know, I, I don't want to speak for Matt or, or you either, but like we're not NBA players, but like it's so hard to be like, 
hey, I just got all this money, but I'm still unhappy doing what I'm doing here. Like, he still gets to play basketball. Like, I mean, he yeah. does. He does, bro. But, I mean, we've seen it. It's a new NBA, bro. We've seen James Harden get fake fat to leave a team. Like, <laughs> so it's, it's different. Uh, I just – um. Hey, dude, I got fat to try to get out of the Navy, and they're just not letting me out of they're here. They're not doing it. They changed the rules for the fat people. Hey, yeah. as long as you don't fail two in a row, you good here. Here we uh, go. Yep. So, fuck us. But uh, I, I still got them. Devin, Devin Booker, still a bucket. Defensively, eh, but still a bucket. Devin think- Booker still not a superstar, just a star. I don't care that he was on the cover of 2K. He's not a superstar in the NBA. What a hot take, Billy. I just – it's it's really hard to be a superstar and you don't lead the league in scoring like a James Harden. Like, it's easy to say James Harden is a superstar because he leads the league in scoring. Now, does he have any defense? No. But Devin Booker is top 10 in scoring and plays no defense. Trey, Trey – uh, not Trey Lance. Why is that what I'm saying? Uh, Trey Young at least tries to play defense. Now, he can't play a lick of defense, but he tries. Superstar. Absolutely. Devin Booker, on the other hand, I just don't – I see him as a star. Without Chris Paul, the Suns, again, would stay at the bottom of the rankings like they did before he got there. They would. Uh, and the yeah, bottom – It's so hot now, Matt, huh? Not so hot now. It's more of a lukewarm take, huh? Yeah. You like Saying that. He might not be the leading scorer in the league, but that's more of like the system he plays in along with Chris Paul and Aiton and all the support guys they have. It's not like – it's not like in Milwaukee where he's – Giannis, where it's like, all right, Giannis, go win us a game. That's not how it is for them. No, but that's how you make a superstar to a star. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Not saying that he's bad. Because Giannis also can run, can run HB dive the whole game, and you're not stopping it. So, well, yeah, nah, but it can be stopped. We seen, we seen Brad Stevens stop it. Like it could be stopped, bro. Like we, it could be stopped. The Celtics stopped it last year. So it can it can definitely the Celtics know how to stop it, and I'm not sure I'm not calling Ma uh, a bad coach because I don't think he is. He definitely got them there, but I'm sure Brad was like, "This is what you do. I can show you how to stop it," and they did. So it could be stopped, but that's why Gian, Gian is still best player on that team, and he's a superstar. But he also has Chris Middleton. Yeah, but look what he's doing without him. Do you think Chris, uh, Devin Booker's doing this without Chris Paul? Yeah, in the regular season, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, I can get with that. In the regular season, yeah. But anyway, to round out um, the bot, the bottom or the bottom of the top five, I got the NBA's best second half team in the league, and that's the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, oh yeah, Dame Dollar. I I didn't expect for them to be good at all. Nope. Uh, but they're doing good. They're scoring the most points in the second half. Like even if they down, they coming back, uh, and they making it look good. But like Dame yep. still, Dame is Dame is a superstar. <laughs> like that's yep. that. What'd you say, Billy? No, 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 nothing. Oh, so Dame, I thought you was about to say Dame not a superstar. Dame is a superstar. Anybody who does this and and makes it a mean superstar, that isn't no. Yeah, definitely a superstar. I do um, want to. I do want to give a big shout out to uh, Matt's boy Chauncey Billups. I, I like like I said last week. I think, dude, even when they're down, Chauncey is like, uh, no, the fuck we're not. Yeah. We're also, this game. Also, I think, I think. Go ahead, Matt. I was going to say, I think Jeremy Grant was exactly what that team was exactly. missing the last few years. That's, Ooh, that's a good point. point. Jeremy Grant has been a, a good player for for some years now, defensively, yeah. but now his offensive game is coming out there. I'm thinking Chauncey telling him, hey, man, you know, this is the NBA. I don't need you to just scrap up. I need at least 18, 20 a night, and he going out yeah. there and doing that every – and he looking good, man. He crossed Zion up the other night, and I was like, and then he just dunked on two people. So he got it. He always had it in his bag. I think uh, that was another L taken by one of the teams on my bottom tier list. <laughs> there we go. Mm. Let's go with our bottom tier. I'm actually going to make another trade, a switch on this. The number one worst team in the league is 
the Houston Rockets. So uh, this is not good. They're still they're too young. Uh, Eric you Gordon. Jalen Green is the guy. You said what now? You think Jalen Green is the guy? I think they all good. I think that collective core they they can score and all that, but they don't have. I told you, and I'm gonna keep saying this. Eric Gordon ain't the vet that they need. Like he yeah. hates it there. Um, they need like a superstar vet, like somebody old. And, like they need somebody that that a like in public say nothing bad about them, but in the locker room slap the shit out of one of them. Like, <laughs> like that never, I I was thinking like Carmelo, like get a mellow there. Mm. Yeah, but uh, Melo's trying to get that last chip, dude, before he gets out of here. He needs nah, I just think uh You said he needs it, Matt? <laughs> yeah. You don't think do you think he, he's he's first ballot, right? Without a ring? No. I'd say so, but there's no doubt if he gets a ring. No. He so I'll just I'll NBA throw NBA just throws anybody in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, because it's the basketball hall of fame. It's not the NBA, and he has the three yeah. gold medals. And that's why that's the only reason why that's his accolade and the national like, championship. Yes, that Syracuse I'll, team was dirty. I always say that, that bro. Uh, the only reason why he's getting in is because the Olympics, bro. If he don't win, he's the best Olympics, Olympic player of all time. Yeah, I mean, high score, but yeah, you know, without that, what else has he done? Like the Knicks. The Knicks, the one year the Knicks was good when he came back from injury, they fell off. Well, that's because uh, Jason Kidd literally carried that team. I just, I don't know, bro. Like he had a hard go. I ain't gonna, have, I ain't gonna lie. Being in a, a young in the West with prime Kobe, Kobe the and Spurs, the Spurs, like, and the Suns, uh, Dirt Kings back then. It, it was, it was, it's a lot, bro. But nah. He's not first ballot, but he'll get in first ballot. I ain't hating on him. He probably uh, huh? No, that's fair. Uh but yeah, the Rocket, they need somebody that'll slap the shit out of one of them, but like, hey man, we could be good. Cause they can be good. They're young, they can run, they can score. It's just undisciplined. Like and this is this is another thing. I'm also I'm not a fan of one and done for college basketball either. I think we we put these young kids in the NBA way too fast and we like you put these first round draft picks and all this on them like especially a compare like all the comparisons to the Kobe's and the LeBron's of the world and you're like dude this kid is 19 like that doesn't just happen all the time you know what I mean yeah I mean I get it but at the same time one wrong move and they injured they career over bro so I get it yeah you know, a lot of these athletic kids we gotta think where they coming from what they trying to do? So, no, I'm with I'm with that 100. percent The maturity level it's getting better. I ain't gonna lie, it's getting better. Before this Houston team, Zion was mature. Uh, Ja Ja was mature. Zion Zion was well, Zion kind of lame because he wear like anime suits. Uh, no, Zion. <laughs> that's way, a topic for another day. Either way, my number two team is the good old Detroit Pistons. Uh. Matt got the Michigan. <laughs> How you feel about that, Matt? Hey, I, we have the, all the best young talent in the league, and then if we add Wemby, I mean, obviously there's only up from there, right? If we're the worst team, we add Wemby with Cade and Ivy. Like, I'm, I'm glad you said something about Wemby. Keep that, keep that name in mind. Uh, nah, y'all suck though. Uh, <laughs> I still, I will say I don't believe in Wemby just because I feel like he's gonna be very injury prone throughout his career, like Porzingis is. Not but, even like Porzingis, like Chet. We ain't heard about Chet. Yeah. He got hurt in yeah. the same bill, almost. But keep keep them names in mind. Yeah, my number uh, three, Charlotte Hornets. Uh, Fuck, they look bad. Go to jail, you, uh, <laughs> bro. Like, hey, I'll take them. Bruh, like they are a trade, like they got good players. And I somebody said Gordon Hayward was begging to get out of there, but don't nobody want Gordon Hayward. But if I'm a, if I'm a team, I'm trying to get scary Terry up out of there because I know what he could do for me. Uh yeah. Lamelo don't care about number being fly, but he made it to the lead. That was his only dream, his daddy dream. Hey, get to the lead. 
he has those super cool Hulu ads too. Don't even disrespect on that. Yeah, Wayne. Um, my number, my number four worst is the Orlando Magic. Keep your eyes on the Magic. We ain't got to go into them because I'm. We gonna we gonna talk about them in a minute though. Because um, I do like Pablo. Pablo probably win rookie of the year. Um, yeah. And then my number five. Is our boys Billy who's on a three game streak right now? Uh, I think I think Bron took AD in the locker room and slapped the shit out of him like, "Hey, stop <laughs> being a bitch! Braid your hair to the back. Do what you need to do to get your hair out your face and start playing like a man." And what he had three thirty eights and or almost forty point games in a row. Yeah, going crazy. Nobody AD. Nobody can fucking guard you, bro. Thanks for waking up. Um. I got the Lakers. Speaking of the Lakers, Russ probably will win six man of the year. Uh, looking way better. Still got a lot of turnovers. Um, yeah. But I think Brian also went and talked to coach and was like, look, if you fuck up in late game situations, I don't care how angry he is. Keep him out of there. Yeah. It's- and <laughs> they've won every game that they've done that. So, yeah, um, six man of the year. Uh, he got the highest three point percentage on the Lakers, which ain't saying much, but <laughs> saying a lot. Um, uh, highest plus minus. Uh, since LeBron gone, he lead the team in assists, so he revamped himself. And I think what it does is because they still gonna try to get him out of there, that just makes his trade value higher. Uh, yeah, so that's good for that. Um, speaking of the Lakers, while we still on it. I think they should still try to get Dwight from Taiwan. Uh, hear me out, Billy. Dwight's numbers in, in Taiwan, first game, 38, 14 and 32, 25 boards, two from 10 for three, nine assists, four blocks. All right, okay. hear me out. We don't have a big man. Thomas Bryant is our second big man, and uh, I can't pronounce his name. The real dark skinned dude. Uh, when you, I, I can't pronounce his name. Either way, Dwight Howard better than both of them. And if so, and now let me keep talking. Okay, sorry. Points on <laughs> uh, and if he come, Dwight Howard would start, and AD goes back to the four where he's most comfortable. He he's looking good now playing at the five, but bro, every time he jumps up, if you're watching a Lego game like I'm watching a Lego game. Yeah, yeah, you, yep, you gasp every time, bro. Like, even famous lows, he out here saying AD cooking, but every time he go up, I know he's gonna come down holding it back. And I'm just like, all right, bro, I don't need the white to score 38. I don't need him to do that no more. I don't need him to go 14 for 32. I don't need him to get nine assists. I do need the four blocks. I do need about 11 boards and maybe seven points, Billy. The white Howard can give me that. Because there are no big body centers in the league. And I don't need him to be a dominant Dwight Howard. I just need him to give me rebounds to kick the ball back out to somebody driving in to get an open dunk or right there to AD. Like, because anybody in the NBA, Dwight Howard's still big as fuck. Uh, so they're going to be like, all right, we got to crash him since he got the rebound. That's an easy oop. And we done seen him throw the, we seen it work. We seen him throw the oop to, A.D. and JaVale, the year they won the chip. Yeah. And we don't have to pay, because he only made like three mil in top one. Bro, we can pay Dwight Howard the vet's minimum, and he'll take it because he's just happy to be back in the NBA. Don't nobody like to go overseas, especially somebody that can still play in the NBA. And I still and think – stuff on Marbury, and they make you statues out there. So, I mean, Dwight probably going to get a statue, but it don't matter. One game. Yeah, I think yeah. well he he had a good game tonight too. He's still shooting like so. I feel like they should go get Dwight Howard for a tie pin and a pack of Skittles from Taiwan, and he'll come, bro. Like and he'll help the Lakers more than he would hinder them. Cause let's be for real, bro. Uh, he can get a board with Joker. Joker can't jump. Uh, Joel. If you put a big body on him, Dwight's still strong as hell. You seen what happened when Joel tried to purposely flagrant foul Giannis, and Giannis was like, boom, I'm Derrick Henry, bitch, fall. Like, come on, so you could big body him. I just uh I just think he would bring valuable minutes 
to the Lakers franchise or the Nets franchise who doesn't have a big man. Their big man is Claxton. And you heard what KD said about him. You want me to win with this roster? So uh, uh, I know I know we're, we're, we kind of got to move on soon because we're at 55 yes. minutes, I think. But Dwight Howard is playing in Taiwan with me, Matt, and you as the one, two, and five. I, and I knew you was going to say that, but I don't care. Me, Matt, and you ain't running up and down the court like them players. Like, we're not conditioned. We're not doing that. So we can't, we can't say that. They still lead. And you, okay. can't, you can't really say that no more because it's more players coming from overseas to get in the NBA. Now, am I saying somebody from Taiwan? Taiwan? Yeah, Dwight Howard. <laughs> Definitely been in the NBA. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, and my last thing about the NBA, because we can, uh, so we can move on to what we need to talk about, um, is we're going back to the the uh, magic, bro. Bo Bo has the same skill set as Wimby, Wimby, but he has a better frame because Bo Bo ain't small. He ain't super skinny. He mm. he really he like already stocky. Uh, but Bo Bo finally got him a position on the magic, like. A real position, not in between yeah. the G League. He on the team. And if you look at his game, bro, like he do the, a lot of the same shit as Wimby does. And yeah. I think it, I think it's just because uh he on the magic that we don't pay more attention to it. But and you're probably right about that. I think the problem is he's not four inches taller than Rudy Gobert. That's the difference. Yeah, but <laughs> he probably can dunk on Rudy. I think anybody can. He Rudy, probably can Rudy dunk. Gobert's a bitch. Rudy Gobert caused COVID in the league. I'll never forget him for that. <laughs> Touch it on the yeah. fucking things, dude. That's so crazy. Yeah. League is shut down the next day. That's why. Yeah. What y'all want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> Spider hates him. Who? Yeah. Spider. Yeah, he does. Oh, yeah. Like, he does. But let's move on to the most important thing this week, because you know we're a football show. That's yeah. true. It's rivalry week, Billy. It is now. Yeah. So in the pregame show, or the pregame show, um, in our in our pre-show, we we was talking a little bit about it. This week seems because of how jumbled the college football playoff is, and how like how wild it can or cannot be. It's so wild that there's only two games that really matter this week, yeah. and it's Notre Dame here, uh, Notre Dame USC. And the game, Ohio State and Michigan. Fuck Ohio State. <laughs> Absolutely. And fuck, fuck Buckeye for being an Ohio State fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little upset he's not on the show. So, yeah. man, tell me the keys to the game for USC to beat Notre Dame. For uh, USC to beat Michigan. Notre Dame? Yes, sir. Well, it's Caleb Williams going to have to step up like he did versus UCLA. You think he needs Simple five extra yards? I think Notre Dame is a better team than UCLA is. And I think UCLA is a better team than USC is, except for USC has the better quarterback. Mm. So That's Caleb respectful. Williams is going to have to put it on his back again. I don't think – so I've been saying for weeks now that I think Notre Dame upsets USC and takes them out of the out of the college football playoff. They already took Clemson out. <laughs> Possibly. I don't know. Possibly. Yeah, so now, dude, Clemson's still sitting there with, like, a pretty okay – Yeah, they're dude, lurking that, like Alabama was last year. That's why That's why I didn't agree with your statement, Billy, that only two games matter. It's, it's more than two. It's, 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 it's like, literally, the TCU game matters. Uh, yeah, but we know they have to – we know they have to win because if TCU has one loss, it doesn't matter. They could beat whoever the Big 12 – the other guy in the Big 12 championship is by 15. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But, my the the one that matters is the conference that you don't like to talk about, and that's the SEC. Because say Georgia loses, they not kicking Georgia out of the playoffs, but do they put LSU in the playoffs as well? Because they just beat the number one team. So we got to think about that, especially if TCU loses, if USC loses. Like what happens? That shit gets more shaken up, or do you think no? No, so so I think because um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it off to Matt in just a second, but I think if Michigan Ohio State is close and LSU beats Georgia and TCU wins, I still think it's Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, and TCU. 
I don't. And I'm I'm going ahead, yeah. and especially since he ain't on the show, but I was going for it anyway. Michigan wins this game. So uh yeah, there's that. Michigan wins this game and becomes number two, Georgia. But I I still think that we gotta worry about it, Billy, because if TCU lose, if uh if um who else loses? If TCU loses, USC loses, you got Clemson right there, but then you got a two-loss LSU that beat just beat Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, like lost I mean, Tennessee. not Tennessee, but Ole Miss. They just beat all of those ranked teams, bro. Yeah. I I think they get the nod. I really do. I think they get the nod. Would, I don't think they get the to? nod over, over, over a one-loss Big Ten team, no matter the outcome of Michigan-Ohio State. I don't think they get in over that. If TCU has a loss. No, no, no. No, if LSU is still sitting there, they went out and they beat Georgia, I don't think they get in over the 10-1 and one, or the 11-1 and one team. You talking you about TCU? They, they beat Georgia by three by two touchdowns. Oh, if they blow them out, maybe there's a possibility there. If they you so you saying they won't get in over TCU one loss TCU? No, Big Ten. No, I'm saying if TCU wins out, if everything else is going the way it's going, but Georgia loses to LSU, I don't think they because obviously one of the teams, Michigan or Ohio State, they're going to lose, right? Yeah. But if everything goes, everyone else wins. I don't think LSU gets in in there. Well, see that, and that's what I'm saying. Like if LSU or if TCU TCU loses and USC loses and LSU happens to be I don't even say they got to blow them out. They beat them by 10 points. I think LSU get the nod over 10 and 1 TCU uh you're fucking crazy if you think that's happening. I've seen I don't want to I don't want to see TCU versus Georgia, Billy. No, I'm with you, but I'm saying I've seen TCU not get into the college football playoff with an undefeated season. And a non-conference winning Ohio State get into the playoff. Yeah, overnight. and we also seen so, we also seen uh, a two loss LSU team get into the national championship before. That's happened before. They lost in overtime to Arkansas and still went to the Natty. Yeah, and I think I just it's so it's that's what's so crazy, man. With the like now it's the four right. And we're we're looking at at the top four, right? We're looking at TCU that probably shouldn't be in in all actuality. Like, and that's the beauty of college football is you earn where you're at. But TCU, we everyone thinks that they would get mollywopped by insert any of the three other college football playoff teams. Well, well, unless you're in the MAC. Yeah, but well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I'm saying though, we we we're, we're we're sitting here with all these. Ig- Crazy, and it's crazy that we're how many different scenarios we can go through. Yeah, because the biggest one we forgot is uh, Drake's son had on an Alabama shirt. Oh no! Oh, uh, and Alabama, uh, Alabama is playing Auburn in the Iron Bowl. But if Alabama won, and then all these teams we talk about lose, Alabama right back in running it into it too. Like, yep, it's a lot of crazy scenarios, but two. Because I can definitely see a two-loss Alabama team making it anywhere. Yeah. And, and and see, that's the thing, too, with the playoff is, like, it's, so it's supposed to be the four best teams. Are we going to just leave Alabama out? If we're picking the four best teams and whatever your record is and all that other shit doesn't matter, if we're just picking the four best teams in college football, the, if we don't say Alabama is one of the four best teams, no. it is bonkers to me. Well, if we're taking a record out of it, Texas A&M's in there. <laughs> nah. nah, they have like the best recruiting class of all time this year. They did. But they it was did. by no, and it's by a lot. Like that's what's so crazy. It's yeah. it's not like they just had the best recruiting class of all time. It's like by like six five stars, by five four stars, and by seven three stars. Like it's, it's not even crazy. Close. It's so, wild. So let me do something real quick. It ain't in the notes, but I'm gonna go through the top ten. Uh. Top 10 rivalry games this week. Y'all call y'all winners and losers. Uh, first one, we know what you're going with, Matt, so you ain't got to go nothing. Uh, Ohio State versus Michigan. Who you got, Billy? 
I think I have Ohio State, and only only because I have not seen J.J. McCarthy put Michigan on his back and win a game throwing the ball through the air yet. Uh, I got Michigan, and I got it because uh, I don't think he's going to have to put the team on his back. Michigan's going to run all over fucking Ohio State. I got that happening. Uh, you think so, too, Matt? I think so. I think the blueprint is exactly the same as last year. The only difference is we're bigger, faster, stronger on defense this year than we were last year. I got, I got, I got uh, Michigan with 120 yards rushing. Uh, Entire game or first half? Maybe first half. I <laughs> think. Blake, hey, Shake and Blake had 103 yards in the first half. Yeah. He's got a little, he's got a little knee boo boo, but he'll he'll come back from it, and then the Don will be back for the game. So I, I got Michigan, and because. Buckeye didn't show up. Uh, number two. I like it. Auburn versus Alabama. Who you got? I have Alabama by 50. Who you got, Matt? I got Alabama by 51. Oh. I got Alabama. I got Alabama by uh, – I got Alabama by 18. Dude, I, so I, I take it back. I take it back. I'll go by 38 because Cadillac Williams is a hell of a coach. No, I do like Cadillac Williams at Auburn. Yes. Well, I just saw them play Austin PV last week, and they only put up 34. So I got Alabama by 18. Uh, let's see. That's a good point. Notre Dame versus USC. Golden Domers, baby. I don't know what that is, Matt. What is it? The Golden Domer? Yeah, Golden Domers, Notre Dame. We're oh, Golden Dame. Gold moments. I got you. Um, yeah, no, uh, same here. I got Notre Dame, even though they're scared to play Michigan because they're a bunch of bitches. Well, you know me. Uh, shout out to start it off different this time. Shout out to Frank. Yeah, hey. you thought I forgot you. Shout out to Frank, Rich, and uh, Mitch. Fuck Notre Dame. I hope y'all get demolished. <laughs> you guys. Fuck. I will say, dude, Caleb Williams with that fucking sword was, like, pretty cool to watch, right? Like, even if you're not a USC fan, like, that was still pretty cool. All right. Florida, Florida State. Give me FSU this week. Florida just coming off a loss to fucking Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt has two SEC wins in a row this year. Shout out to the Commodores. Who you got, Matt? I'm going with Florida by 10. Oh, little shit. comeback victory. Oh, okay. I got Florida State. Uh, nah, fuck that. SEC, I'm going Florida by three. Billy sitting alone here with FSU's pick. I got you. All right. <laughs> Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State. <laughs> they played last week, Tonyo. Oh, yeah. shit. My fault. Who won it? Oklahoma that? lost. beat the shit out of fucking Oklahoma State. Yeah. yeah. Mike uh, Gundy, I want to throw in there for as good of a coach as Mike Gundy is, he's only he's like he's been at Oklahoma State for like 17 years or something. He's only yeah. beat Oklahoma three times. Am I the only one who thinks he's a drastically different person, like like the way he looks, the way he did, like that like famous press conference he had to now with his like long black hair? Oh yeah, no, definitely. He's a yeah. different person. Uh let's see. Did Georgia Tech play yet? Georgia play Georgia Tech yet? No, that's next week. Yeah. All right. So Georgia versus Georgia Tech. I got Georgia by sixty-seven. <laughs> I have I have Georgia struggling actually because I think they're they're looking ahead to USC or uh, excuse me. I think they're looking ahead to LSU a little bit, and I yeah. think struggling with Missouri, struggling with Kent State, struggling with Kentucky. I think Georgia's uh, again. They're going to win, but they're going to struggle again. Biggest hater of the SEC I've ever met. Go ahead. Uh, I man. think it's gonna be like a. I think it's gonna be a, like a close or maybe even tied game at half, but then Georgia pulls away in the second half. All right. Uh, the best rivalry game in sports. Oh God. The, the egg bowl. The mm-hmm. egg bowl. Ole Miss versus Mississippi State. Well, after seeing Lane uh, fire a news anchor tonight on Twitter, <laughs> got Ole Miss by twenty four. Got. Yeah, man. I think uh, Lynn Kiffin puts on a show for Auburn. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I'm taking Mississippi State because Ole Miss just didn't know what to do with Arkansas. And Arkansas uh, 
definitely put the beat down on Ole Miss to show them like who's who's actually good in the SEC. So we, put, we fucked up by publicly uh, saying shit to the refs. I don't think that was smart at all. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I don't think that was smart at all. Uh, South Carolina versus Clemson. That's hard to call after this week, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I think Spencer uh, Rattler is going to be living a little too high this week. Clemson. I got Clemson because I think Spencer Rattler still sucks. Uh, he just he had his day. He had a game, but that ain't him. Uh, I'm going uh, my pro conference. The SEC um, beats down on Clemson. Give me the game. Cox. Go Cox. Oh, yeah. Go Cox. 100%. And then I got uh, – well, these last two don't matter, but uh, Party School versus Arizona. Who y'all got? <laughs> uh, give oh, me Arizona. Shit. You going to give the game? Right? <laughs> no, I'm not going to the game. You should, dude. That'd be yeah, super cool. That shit would be yeah. cool. You should just go party at Arizona. I'm not going to go. It's going to be the same weekend. I got to be. I got to be in front of a TV. Yeah, bro. I get hey, it. Hey, send us that clip too whenever you get in front of that TV. Yeah, definitely right. put it on the show. Uh right. <laughs> I got Arizona cause Arizona State just because they party, bro. I hey, that's the only reason why. And it's the it's the it's the oldest rivalry uh trophy in college football. That shit is crazy. That shit is crazy. Are you sure about that? I'm positive. 1899. Like Holy shit. <laughs> the duel in the Michigan, death. Ohio State. We took a we took a little break, but we're 1897. So that shit don't count. Shouldn't took a break. Pussies. took a break. And the shit is called y'all shit ain't called the duel in the desert. That's hard as fuck. That's yeah, hard. We have water. Yep. Well, I don't want to duel in the ocean. We don't need to struggle. There's- there's this called the game, Tonio. That's yeah. like the best thing to be called. That's lame. That's a show on BET. <laughs> <laughs> it is though. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one is. Yeah. Hey, it used to be on UPN. Is it on? Yep. It's, it's on, on BET, BET now. now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. And the last one is Washington versus Washington State. You know what, man? I'm gonna ride with Old Crimson, man. They've they've showed up to every game day for like 275 weeks or some crazy number like that. Give me give me Crimson and Washington State. This is gonna actually be a good game because it's the Pac-12 championship, uh, North Division title, bro. So that's kind of hard. This yeah. should be this should be like a real good game. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with Washington. Yeah, I'm going with Washington. I think Penix is one of the best quarterbacks in college football. I think he goes in the third round to any insert NFL team here, and that's and he takes them. He's going to do the uh, where me and Antonio thought Kellen Mond was going to do for the Vikings. Mm. I don't know what the fuck happened to that dude. Hey, dude. Hey, sometimes you make some bad calls. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck happened to that dude. We, but, but I think Washington. I do want to throw in. I think Washington is going to ride really high off that uh, Oregon win, and I think they, they might be overlooking Washington State a little bit because I really. Well, then like, they're going to realize they only beat Bo Nix, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, well, the only other news we got in college football is prayers going out to Hendon Hooker, man. Season's over. Uh you hate to see it. Uh Tennessee was going down, going down fast anyway. Uh so yeah, but you hate to see it. Don't wish injury on nobody. Nope. Um you think his draft so. stock is significantly hurt for that? If it's a, it's torn ACL, right? Well, yeah, he's almost yeah. 30 now. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's probably bad. But then yeah, uh, yeah. prayers go out to anyone on the sideline with Joe Milton passing the ball. Concussions are going to happen. Hey, that dude. <laughs> hey, they was, talking, they was talking about him. They was like, now, he'll put you in some situations, but he got an arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's a few years ago at Michigan. I was super excited for him to come in over Shea Patterson because Shea Patterson couldn't throw 15 yards. Joe Milton comes out here, throws it 85 yards out of the end zone at Big House. It's like, buddy, hey, your wide receiver is only 15 yards down the field, bro. Like, and they, they said, I throw it down there. There's, hey, bro, they said he's got that, a cannon, and 
the second play was like a 67 yard touchdown. And I'm like, God damn. And I'm talking about Billy. He rolled out 15 yards deep and just let that hole go. No. And he might have like, one of the strongest arms in the country, NFL or college football, bruh, but he just can't control it. Bruh. <laughs> and the dude was like, there it go. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Hey, why you is can he hear it whistling on live TV. Like, and I'm like, bro, he gonna hit a fucking plane. What is he doing, bro? Like, he just let that whole go, bro. Like, a flick of the wrist too, Billy. Like, the shit was not yes. hard to this. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, that shit not. God damn, hit a really real money though. Saturdays, so I can watch me more games. But he beat out Hendon Hooker last year to start the season as Tennessee starter. See, bro. I say that one more time about that. Last year, he was uh, Tennessee starter to begin the season, but Hooker obviously took over because he kept throwing balls 38 yards in the stands. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they, Billy, like, you mad? <laughs> it would be like that dude that got hit in the fuck, that ump that got hit in the fucking head with the baseball, bro. Like, have y'all seen that clip, bro? Yeah. God. I have not. Yet. Bro, it is a dude throwing the ball from. Either he was at shortstop or he was at second base, bro. And he was throwing it to the first base, and he missed the first baseman, and bro, like smacked the fuck out of the <laughs> in the head, bro. And I'm Hold like, on, did Buddy stay in the game? Did who? The, the I didn't. I didn't watch anything past the clip, bro, because I thought I had just seen murder. Like, <laughs> like I'm talking about Billy. He let that shit go and just clapped him in the ear, bro. Like it was bad. It was bad, awesome. bro. But let me ask you this, man, because we at 115. Hey, hey, how you feel about it? How you feel being here, Matt? It was good. It was fun. Obviously, you know, that team down south couldn't make it here today, but you just know, like they're not going to make it. The real Saturday. team really shows up. So, yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> I'm 100 percent with that. Buckeye, we're going to trash you until you get on the screen, bro. We love you, but big point. Yes, we love you. But yeah, you dropped the ball tonight, but. I do want to give another one more big shout out to uh, Magic Man Mustache Matt Bringard for being on the show with us. Uh, Al Borland, that's his name, y'all know him as. That. All righty, Tim. I fucking dude. Ever since you said that, like that's just exactly what I see Matt saying. Just <laughs> oh, I don't think so, Tim. Like when he says the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just step At back first, real I thought, quick. I thought you like misspelled. It. I thought you. Bruins a real person from. Tim Tool Man. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks to our fans, thanks to the fans is Matt that Matt's about to bring to the show. Uh it's been episode 39. I've been Tonio. I've been Billy. I'm mustache. Hey, <laughs> dude. Hey, we appreciate y'all listening, man. Thanks. Uh-huh.